So, hi, I'm Sarah. I think you've all figured that out. <laughs> uh, welcome to Learn to Paint and Draw Better. So this month we're doing composition. So this is one of the, who's, have you guys seen this painting before? Mm -hmm. It's pretty well known. Yeah, it's pretty cool how it lines up with the golden um, spiral. Mm -hmm. uh, you might, may or may not have, who's, ha, has anybody here who hasn't heard of this, the golden spiral or the golden ratio? Fibonacci, Fibonacci right? That's a yeah, it's, it's the Fibonacci sequence essentially in um, a visual representation. So it's, it comes up in art a lot. Uh, and if you want to understand how it works, ask Julie to explain it to you. Because <laughs> I'm not that good at math. I can explain it, but it would take a while. <laughs> <laughs> it would. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what is composition? Do, do, does anyone have a kind of an idea of what composition Detail. is? Detail. Detail. Arrangement. Arrangement, that's a good word for it. Uh, it's, any, anybody else want to make a suggestion on what composition is, what it's about? Placement. Placement, right. Um, balance. Balance is one of the aspects of composition or design. Um, colors is definitely is going to factor into everything that you do. Um, composition is mainly about the underlying structure of a piece of art. So, um, so yes, it's about everything being in the right place, about using the underlying structure to get your message across. So this is The Last Supper from Leonardo da Vinci. And um, I use this one because there's like 7 million people on the internet that is pulled this thing apart and said, this is the, how the underlying structure and composition works. Um, <laughs> so obviously there's no right or wrong answer, but if you look at um, all of your lines, we did perspective last month, all of the mm -hmm. perspective lines, this is single point perspective. They all kind of converge behind the head of Jesus. You've got these clumps of people. They're all clumped together in little groups of three. So you've got um, that pattern, that rhythm that repeats. Um, you've got your use of color. There's red, he's dressed in red. Then you've got a little like splashes of red, but they're not as bright as the red that he's wearing. Okay, what else can you see that makes him stand out? If I look at this or that. He's in the dead center of the position of the He's framed with a He's framed the behind him. him. Yeah, with the, with the, like this is all door. dark. Yeah, it's the doorway or the window, whatever it is. It's all dark and then there's this rectangle of light behind him. He's kind of winged by the two other rectangles of light. He's in the dead center. One of the artists that I follow on YouTube likes to say the dead center is dead boring, <laughs> which is often true, but not always, not in this case. Anything else you pick up or notice from this? Well, the light and dark. Mm -hmm. uh, on the walls. Yeah, so one, one of, so the one side is light leading up to it with dark rectangles in it, the other side is dark with light rectangles in it. Um, the whole back, the back of it looks dark. Yeah, so there's like a lot of very dramatic shadows, it creates depth, it makes the whole thing very interesting. Um, a lot of contrast. There's a lot of contrast, never be afraid of contrast, it's your friend. They use a photographic method where you divide a picture into thirds. Yes. Yes. The rule of thirds. We'll get to the rule of thirds. It's actually, I've got several slides dedicated to that. But yes, um, the table, the top of the table actually cuts the frame about a third of the way. This cuts the frame about a third of the way up. So we'll talk about the rule of thirds a little bit more later. Okay, so um, that's some of the underlying structure of it. Um, these are different common types of composition or common structures. What's up? I was up? just wondering, I, I know back from the painting again, I switched this screen already, but the figure in black, was that Judas, and is that why he's facing the other directly, he's facing away from Jesus? Mm, I think if I remember correctly, that's that, Judas, but I could be wrong. Here. Does anyone know? No, I think that's Judas. I believe the one in the back that's kind of skulking, and like, okay. that's Judas. If I, he's, yeah, he's, I was just wondering, this, yeah, um, no. he, he's kind of set behind the others. The others are all like at the table. And he's he's kind of behind them. But uh, I have not studied this formally since 
the eighth grade, so I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, please you, yeah. yes, please. So um, Judy's actually going to hand, so it's one each. Um, ah, it collated them. Well, um, I might have to go make some more copies of those. Okay, I'll see um, So, yeah, so these are different composition structures that you commonly see. Um, it's, I'm, I'll go ask Lisa to make okay. a, or yeah, can well, you go ask Lisa I'll ask to make yeah. this copy? Those aren't collated, are they? No. Okay, good. Sorry, they're going to be front and back for no good reason. I was wondering why the one stack was light. Okay. So, and then there's some examples on some of them. So, like the diagonal composition where the frame is cut from corner to corner. Um, there's an example, the mountain range. Thank you, Judy. You're, you're coming. Okay. Um, and then there's another common composition that you'll see is like a tunnel kind of composition. Um, and then there's some examples of different pictures with it. Uh, there's the golden spiral and the golden section. So the deal with the golden spiral is essentially, and I might be not, a, I, I might, my numbers might be a little bit off on this, but this is this times, hey, what's the, what's the number for the Fibonacci sequence? One to 1.6? Julie? What's, 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 the, what's the multiplication number for the Fibonacci sequence, do you know? Multiplication? Yeah, like what's this to this? What's the ratio? Is it? Oh, gosh. Anyway. Okay. It goes, it, there's a sequence of multiplication that starts with yeah. one. Yeah, let's see what the ratio is. One times one. Something to do with a six. Uh, okay, so it's 1.6. 1 1.618. 1 um, Yeah, so if you do a bunch of math with this side and this side, then you get the number 1.618. And that's as much as I can explain <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, okay, so some different composition uh, structures. You this should one have. This we have this one. So the front, yeah. This one you had up. Yeah, so we'll get more one. of that one. It's not, not super important yet. I know, so the one you had next to it, we don't have. Okay. So, yeah, I, I didn't print them all because some of them were kind of duplicates, so. Um, Is that a sphere? And then there's some examples of how it actually shows up in artworks, classic artworks. Whoever's here. I, that, there's nobody at that table. Okay, so you, excuse me. Just, would you slide that one down to her, the composition one? Does she have that? She has that. Um, oh, you've got all three? Oh, sorry, I'll take those two. Okay. Sorry, Sarah. That's okay. So there's an example of the golden spiral. So it's this this picture has two of them, um, kind of stacked on top of each other. Both of them end in like the face of one of the babies. No, I looked at that, but I wouldn't have seen spirals. I would have just seen the triangle of the three heads, like an off triangle or a. Yeah, it's this is one person's analysis of the underlying structure of it, and. Honestly, often when you see people apply the golden spiral to pictures, you're like, huh, where? <laughs> um, the wave on the first page was the best example, I think, of the golden yeah. spiral actually applied yeah. to a, a composition. Um, there's a, an example of the um, circular composition, uh, obviously in photography. Yep, so this is one of those cases where dead center is not dead boring. What does make it interesting is that she's turned sideways so she's not if she was standing facing the camera I think it might be a little bit less interesting and then also your brightest colors right behind her head another example of the tunnel um, composition it's another circle composition and then that's an abstract example of the circle composition okay. questions no that's cool this one is one of the, an example of an S composition with a, an abstract painting. So that's what we're doing this like month. Well, can you see how there's yeah. like a bright mm -hmm. area yeah. that kind of runs like an S? Yeah. Oh, now yeah. I get it. Yeah. So it sort of is an S composition. It also uses the rule of thirds. 
So it's got this like little, it looks like an island maybe, that goes in. So if you divide the canvas from top to bottom in three, there's a third. And then if you divide it side to side in three, the third, the island ends on a third. And then this one, there is a spot here that's also on a third. So that translates to, and also it is morning. Um, so the elements of design, uh, balance, pattern, rhythm, emphasis, contrast, and unity. Uh, what does that mean? Let's look at it. So balance, I love this picture to explain balance because <laughs> it's not just they have to be exactly the same. It is, this one is very big, very heavy, and then you've got a variety of them on the side to balance that one out, right? So balance doesn't necessarily have to mean they're identical. So that's an example of this type of composition, the one that looks like balancing scales. These are just inspiration. Okay, so this is an example of a, an abstract piece that's got a balanced composition. It's not exactly identical, but what happens on the one side sort of happens on the other side. Um, everything kind of happens in the bottom two thirds of the painting too. There's a lot of negative space at the back. Um, what are some other things that you think makes this, do you think this one works? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think makes it work aside from the fact that it's balanced, um, that it gives us the rule of thirds? Is the there anything else? Contrast. Color contrast, right? Can you explain a little bit more what you mean by the color contrast? Oh. The front is very dark and the back is light. Okay. Plus I really like the black. The black in it. In it. Yeah. The black does stand out. And like, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of, so we call this the area where there's not very much going on, we call that negative space. So there's a lot of negative space in this work. Um, you'll see that a lot in the examples I have for you. There's another one that's a balanced composition. Um, this is balanced kind of top and bottom. It looks like smoke to me. It's like smoke. It does kind of feel like a little bit like a fire maybe. So this is called string theory in blue. And obviously blue is not the predominant color there. <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess this is oil based on the techniques I see, but I can't. No, and for sure. Abstract. Yeah, these are all abstract works. Um, this is another one in called the improbable landscape. And you can see this one's very different, but the weight uh, of the color. So if you took all of the color on this side and all of the color on this side and how heavy they feel, they balance. Does that make sense? Or am I way too abstract here? Okay. So uh, there's some people believe that darker colors carry more weight in a composition than lighter colors. Uh, which kind of makes sense. Um, Concord, another balanced composition, not identical, but um, very balanced. Again, lots of negative space. It looks like a train. Looks like a train. I think it looks like a waterfall. But you know what? That's the cool thing about abstract pieces. It can look like whatever you want it to. No, because the train. Oh, well, I see it. Like a bullet train that's going that way, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. That's cool. Okay, emphasis or focus. So remember how we said the emphasis is on Jesus in the Last Supper? Mm -hmm. um, another thing that creates emphasis is the, the eye line of the people. Most of them are kind of looking at Jesus. Most of them are, some of them are not. Some of them are not, but there's a lot of focus mm -hmm. going towards him from the, si the line of sight also. Um, how is focus or emphasis created in this picture? Colors. Color, what else? Light and dark. Yeah, the, the, the contrast between light and dark. Um, the only place where we have that yellow is over there. What else? Well, it's graduated, kind of. Graduated? Well, it goes from the really light to the really dark. OK, yeah. yeah. So, so um, value, or, or like yeah. the tonal values, right? So we've, the lightest part, if we turn this black and white, the closest to white would be this area here. What else? Looks like street lights in a fog. 
Mm -hmm. It does kind of look like street lights in, the, lights in the distance. Yeah, it does. But there is also an interesting like uh, rhythm that goes through this painting, which is this. So if you enter from the right, it leads you up here. Um, this is almost like a circular composition. And then you've got the brightest part of the painting is on a third on the left. And it's in the center, kind of. So it's like radiant, almost like darker, and then it's getting kind of lighter, lighter, lighter. Yeah, Not so. Not much, but you know what I mean. It's like it's not very dark on this side, and then with the move, because it's this kind of like a movement layer, mm -hmm. and then it starts getting like a degree of lighter color. Yeah, you're right. It's like this whole, like, it's kind of like if you turned it black and white, it would be very light here and very dark here, and it kind of. It's almost like a um, diagonal composition in terms of the tonal values. This one? <laughs> busy. Very busy. <laughs> really um, busy. Very busy. I like Kandinsky. You like Kandinsky? Well, if you don't like it, then you have terrible taste. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't like Kandinsky either. <laughs> it's not my favorite. But how is um, focus or emphasis created here? Where is the emphasis? In the middle? In the middle? I could yeah. see yeah. how you could say that. That's not what catches my eye first. Like, yeah. This, right? Mm -hmm. That catches my eye first. Why does it catch your eye first? Color. The color, the color yeah. is small. It's size. It's big. Mm -hmm. It's flat. It's the darkest thing in the painting. It's the biggest flat area of dark. Um, it's got that red halo around it. And then the other brightest color is that orange is right behind it. So yeah, everything else is kind of dainty and like light and then that big black it thing is It seems like everything there. else is spinning around that. Yes, it does. It kind of seems like it's got its own gravity, right? Yeah. Oops. Oops. You went backwards. I went backwards. Okay, this one. That looks like a waterfall. Mm -hmm. It does kind of look like a waterfall. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can see it. It goes up. It's called the summit. How is um, how is focus or focal or emphasis focal point or emphasis created in this piece? Firstly, where do you think the emphasis is? From the bottom. The bottom left okay. line. Over here. Yeah. That's not really what catches my eye. This yeah, is exactly. what catches my eye. This like. Ascending blue is kind of what grabs me. Is that breaking the between two? Yeah, it sure, it, it sure does feel like there's a, a line going down the middle of it, which again is on a third of the canvas. Mm -hmm. um, and then something else that really catches my eye on this one is the change in texture, right? Everything else has kind of got this splotchy, still texture, mm -hmm. and then this is like got this like very bold brushwork that moves in one direction, which is up. Um, so, and then of course that very bright cyan also catches my eye. Um, but I could see how you could say that the bottom left, it's definitely heavier with the black down there. It definitely, but it's not interesting. It doesn't hold your attention. Like you're drawn to that maybe first, right? You maybe go there first, but then this kind of leads you. So that's part of the rhythm. We'll get to rhythm in a minute. Um, this wow. is a Turner. Uh, it's mm. called Snowstorm. J M W Turner. Yeah. So it's a ship in a snowstorm. Uh, there's a lot of. What's the focal point? I think the middle, but it's a the swirl ship. around it. The, the ship, yeah, the middle. The ship is right in the center or just below center. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you're right. Everything kind of swirls around it. Mm -hmm. The colors, the brushwork. And then again, you've got this bright yellow spot right here, and the brightest white is right behind mm -hmm. the ship. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of movement going on with the brushwork in this one, too. Even though there's a lot of movement, is that considered circular? Um, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I could you tend to think it because you see the ship so much, but there's all those brush strokes. That yeah, I think this is not. It's not like okay. So like I say, these are not like the start and end of composition. 
Um, these are some things that you can kind of use for composition. So I'd say if I was going to look for an underlying structure here, I'd say, yeah, there's probably a circle right here, but there's also like lines going in here, here, here. So there's a lot of lines kind of leading and they're, they're abstract. They're not um, necessarily one of these, but they're leading to this circular light space maybe. It's not really central. It's a little bit off to the side. But yeah, you can certainly see kind of like a circular composition over here that's framed with all of these dark areas. It looks like a center of a hurricane. Yeah, it does. It feels like the center of a storm. Um, and it's called snowstorm. So, uh, Which leads us nicely into pattern and rhythm. Okay, and I put these two together because they're hard to separate in art. <laughs> yeah. But the first is a heartbeat. The yep. yep. second is a sound wave from a song. So, heartbeat, da dum, da dum, da dum, very rhythmic, very steady, repeating, uh, predictable. The song, there is changes. So, we've got pattern and rhythm, right? They're similar but a little bit different. When you, when you use rhythm, you use a pattern and you change it a little bit. You make it interesting. You change things about it. So, that's a pattern. That's rhythm. Okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Yoyoi Kuzama, this is an installation. Uh, it's not a painting. <laughs> It's an actual piece where you can go walk around in between it. Uh, Yumi and the Balloons, this one has both pattern and rhythm. So the pattern is the repeating polka like dot. Octopus. It does. It feels very much like an octopus. All of her stuff feels a little bit weird and sci-fi-y. Um, <laughs> so the pattern that repeats here is the polka dots. And the rhythm is created by the movement of the tentacles, let's call them. Uh, this is when she exhibited at the Tampa Art Museum, and that's me sitting down on the floor. <laughs> uh, Love is Calling was the exhibit's name. Why? Okay. And you may or may not know Mr. Mondrian, Mr. Pete Mondrian. Um, he uses the pattern that's kind of rectangles and squares. He also uses a lot of golden ratios in his work. Uh, I can't see any of them. Oh, I think this is a golden ratio. This one right here, if I'm not mistaken. So he repeats the golden ratio and he's worked a lot. Um, and they're all, I, I for some reason don't have the name of this one, but they're all titled something like composition in blue, black, red, and yellow. Um, so I'm sure that's what this one's called too. <laughs> um, and then this is just one of those no-name, um, you can buy the print on Amazon things. I'm sure some poor artist got ripped off making this. Um, but there's a lot of pattern, a lot of circles. It's always the circular motif that repeats over and over and over. And then you've got this cross that kind of breaks that, that um, pattern and creates emphasis. And you've got the, the different colors, the different sizes, and the different techniques for making the circles that create rhythm. Okay, this is another one that's got some good rhythm and flow. How does this one, firstly, where do you think the focal point of this one is? Step two. I see the purple circle. Yeah. The purple yeah, circle. but the yellow circle kind of starts it and it yeah. ends at the purple circle. But does it end or does it keep going and go back to the yellow circle and start again? So yeah, I do think, I do feel like there's multiple, I don't even want to call them focal points so much, it's just places where the eye pauses, but there's definitely like a very natural kind of flow that moves through this painting. Um, and that's created with the lines, the colors, the shape, um, the repetitive motifs and patterns. Um, <laughs> contrast. One red balloon. One red balloon sticking out above the rest. Uh, it's 
tail is a little bit curly. You probably can't see it very well in this. Um, so some different ways we can create contrast is with texture. Uh, so this guy used some, it's mostly very smooth, and then there's a kind of a lot going on texture-wise over here where his focal point is. Another way you can create a contrast is with value, so how light or how dark something is. Um, and then using opposites, like in this case, there's very clean negative space with very messy black ink on it, <laughs> uh, which I actually really like. I personally like this piece a lot. It's very simple. It would take you probably about two hours to create, and then I don't know what I'll have you do for the rest of the month, so please don't do this. <laughs> uh, and this one creates contrast through color. So you've got the blue background with a very bright orangey red, which is the complementary for that um, on the foreground. And the uh, white, too. Oops. It has the light. Oops. Yes, it's got the white. So you've got, again, thirds. Hmm? Yep. So it has all the primaries. Yes, it's got all the primaries, but notice that it's got yellow very sparingly. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> it's mainly blue. It's got a little, it's got a, like a good amount of red, but it's the focal point, and then there's just a hint of yellow. Um, unity, like the spider web that holds all the drops together. So how did this artist create, or these artists, they're two separate artists. More of those no-name paintings that I found online. <laughs> Is our friend crossing the road? <laughs> We have a chicken that walks up. around out here sometimes. <laughs> the rooster has crowed. The rooster has crowed. Okay. Uh, so how, did, how, is, how is unity created in these pictures? By reflect, the reflection of the sky into the water is bringing it together. Sure, that's one separate. way. Yeah, absolutely, that is one way. What else? Similar colors. Yes, the color schemes. The color schemes are a big thing. It's... All of this, do you remember from the color theory session that we did, we talked about color harmonies, mm -hmm. right? So these colors are all very harmonious. It's yellows, browns, blues, and they all have like, they all have like, the browns also have like orange and yellow undertones, or um, they're browns that are made from orange or yellow by adding their complementary. Uh, and then the blue grays kind of mesh really well with it. So they're all very harmonious. They fit together. They go together. But also, everything is very desaturated. Does that is that a word that mm -hmm. makes sense to everybody? Um, so it's like pastel colors. They're all very light. How is this one creating unity? It's, this one's easy. The blues. Everything's blue. blue. Everything's blue, but there's another way that it also creates unity, and that's with the use of texture, right? I think this, this looks like crayon to me or pastel, so everything's got a very similar texture, and there's a lot of similar strokes that kind of go down, up and down. This one? I like this one a lot, too. So how is this one creating unity? Inorganic blobs of color. <laughs> two two. Okay, yeah, so there's there's the rep repetition of two, sure. Again, notice how the center of these two stripes is a third down the canvas. Um, what else? Like there's a lot going on here. How is this? You've almost you've got complementary colors, blue and gold. They're almost complementary. They're almost opposites, I should say. What's going on? How is this artist creating unity? Looks like a child swinging on a rope to me. Okay, I can see that. Um, okay, so I think this artist is doing a lot of the creating the unity with I haven't texture. picked up my new glasses yet, so Aww. I can't see it. I'm sorry. I can't see the child. Yeah, I, I don't see the child either. But I don't either. So I think there's a lot of repetition. 
There's a lot of repetition of textures, the same kind of textures. So the kind of ripple of whatever it is that the artist put here uh, is pressed into the paint in some of the other areas on the canvas. Um, so the brushwork kind of repeats, creates the same repeat, repeating texture around the canvas and stuff like that. Slightly tarnished silver, if that's what they consider silver. Yes, definitely tarnished and maybe outside. Okay. Um, how about this one? How is there unity created in this one? Again, you've got opposite colors. What's going on? How is there unity? Well, they're connected yeah, with the They're connected somehow. The black. Yeah, so, this, so there's this line that kind of connects. There's this black mm -hmm. here and then also picks it up over here. But what else? There's balance between the red on being on opposite sides, plus the red is in the top third and the bottom third, and like the left third and then the right third. Yeah, yeah. so the, the opposite corners have the brightest red in them, uh, and then you've got this black here and the black in the middle on the opposite side. And then you side. have the white and the white, they kind of... Yeah, the bluish white color. Yeah, so, that is. so all of the colors in this are repeated multiple times, but there's something else that's very important. The word that I've said so many times in this class today. What else is going on that's the same throughout the, the piece? Contrast. Brush brushwork. Brush right, the brushwork. The brushwork. So there's a lot of. It's all kind of haphazard, but it's the same internal disorganization that exists throughout the whole piece, if that makes sense, right? Hmm. This one's easy too. How is okay. this one creating unity? Hmm? All red. All red. Well, there's yellow. Yeah. But it's yellow, and there's but like it looks like red. a pineapple. But red but is like yeah. Taken. Yes, red is the, is the predominant color. It's a, uh, who can remember what this kind of color is? It's not quite monochromatic, because there's, it's the, it's a red and then the two on opposite sides of it, which is called an uh, an anal analogous yeah <laughs> analogous color scheme. Uh, okay, so rule of thirds, and now we get to the rule of thirds, and that's what this one paper is about. This one mm -hmm. called implementing the rule of thirds. Um, so in this photograph, the artist has placed the woman's head on one of the intersections of the two thirds of the photo. Which one's better? Mm -hmm. Use the paper, cover them one at a time. Tell me which one do you think is better? The one on the, one on the right, right? Yeah. Dead center, dead boring. Okay. <laughs> Um, this is a well-known painting. Um, mm -hmm. Two main focal points, two main things of interest are placed on thirds. Another Kandinsky on the left there. Um, and again, like all of the main structures are kind of, so this one kind of ends on a third there and there. This one's kind of placed haphazardly off of a third. Uh, you can make the argument that that line's on a third. Um, and then this is a semi-abstract aerial view of a road next to a sea with um, snow. And the road and the ocean edge are both on thirds in the painting or in the picture. Uh, here's another example. These two points are both on thirds. So you've got a diagonal composition that only really runs in the center um, third of the painting. So that's the paper you guys have. Uh, there's some more examples of implementing the rule of thirds. And again, lots and lots of negative space on that one, which is great. Some common composition problems. Um, so placing, it's kind of related to the rule of thirds. Uh, whenever you place something facing like right up against the edge of a, a painting, it, it creates the feeling of being trapped. So unless you on purpose want to do that, like unless you want to kind of create the feeling of the person being trapped or 
the creature being trapped, um, it's best to give them some room to maneuver. It's also just more interesting when you don't have the bird's nose squished up against the edge of paper. the paper. Okay, why should you plan your composition? What's wrong with this? There's no bad art, but what's wrong with this? It looks like my baby. <laughs> That's not what's wrong with it. <laughs> it's all different colors and it, it's not a... It's a mishmash. It's a mishmash. Yeah. Where did you get There's one of my paintings? <laughs> <laughs> this is not one of yours, Jeannie, because I've seen your paintings. You don't muddy your colors like this. So yes, there is no harmony in these colors. As Rebecca said, it's a mishmash. There's no rhythm. What else? There's no focal point, There's no focal point whatsoever. <laughs> What else? There's no rule of thirds. There's, I mean, rule of thirds doesn't have to be in the painting, but it would have certainly made this better if there were. <laughs> no, rhythm. It's no, no rhythm. No rhythm, right? No rhythm, no structure at all. No pattern. No pattern. It's just, did this person pay attention to their brush, brush strokes? No. No. Nope. Uh, did, did a cat paint? <laughs> 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 or a kid? Oh, no, this was not a child. If this was a child, it would be excusable. Um, something else that's very important here is that the colors are muddy. Um, this person did not use the right kind of paper. They picked up old colors. They just didn't like let things dry properly. It's just a mess. They tried to use all of the colors in their paint box. Um, anything else? There's no negative space. There's no negative space. I think we got all of them. Muddy colors, lack of structure, little contrast. Yeah, that's the other thing. There's very little contrast going on here. No color harmony, no negative space, and it's unbalanced. C. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the trouble with, uh, and this, this girl says her art is bad by her own definition, her artwork. Um, the problem with creating abstract works is very often they are not good. Um, are like, like not, that one. not subjectively not good, like, like this one. She created something that she made bad on purpose to see if she could sell it for a lot of money. And she did. The one that I showed you before this one was, was being sold for like, 300 and something too. I was like, no. Um, so how do you know if it's good? When you go and you start your abstract painting, how will you know if it's bad or not? Tell me whether or not you like the following pictures. Okay, I guess Canva is going to take 500 years to load this. It's not pixelated like this. There we go. Do you like this? Yes, yes or no? Yes. What do you like about it? It's cheerful. It's, it's cheerful. Colorful. It's colorful. It's balance. There's balance. It has. Um. Well, there's. It's there are thirds. thirds. Yeah. So you've got thirds. You've got some structure going on. Yeah. The colors are also not muddy. It's not just like Wah! all the colors together, mush mashed. Hi, Alexa. I think that's a record for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alexa. He, he made it in time for the end of the presentation and the part that you'd like best because this is about your opinion. Okay, um, do you like this one? This one is pixelated. I don't prefer it, but I like the composition. I don't prefer it, but I like the colors of it. It's not bad, it's not good, it's one of those Amazon prints. Um, <laughs> It is. It's, it's literally, that's why it's a fixed that It's an Amazon print. So there's, so what's good about it? There's pattern. There's, there's pattern. A there's some repetition. Yeah. There's some repetition. Contrast. Some contrast. What's bad about it? Boring. It's it boring. boring. It's yeah. heck of it boring. It needs red in it. it <laughs> <laughs> you would be more than welcome to add some red if you wanted to try something like this. What else is weird about this? Look at the edges. It's it's too 
small for the picture. Yeah, right? It doesn't fill, it doesn't go, it feels like you want it to spill over the edges, right? Like maybe it would be better if it was spilling over the edges mm. or touching the edges instead of just this clump Whoa. of stuff in the middle, yeah. right? So yeah, not great, but not terrible either. I've seen worse. Mm. Did a child do that? Is this good or bad? Do you like this or sorry? Do you like this or don't you like this? No. No. I like the vibrancy of it. Okay, so the vibrancy that's that's. But that would not be my preferred. I don't see voice. yacht club there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she got really wasted at the yacht club. <laughs> it was a bad trip. <laughs> Something terrible, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> the bathrooms were really dirty. I think there was a murder in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is, so we said we like the vibrancy. What's, what else is good about this? It has red in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, she's got some good contrasting colors in there. She also has every other color in there, <laughs> but she's got some good contrast in there. What, what else is good? Well, the brush kind of tied, ties both pictures together. Mm -hmm. Yep, the brushwork does tie the two pieces together. There's a lot of interesting texture going on in general. It kind of looks like she maybe did a layer of... Um, Scratch marks. Yeah, Scratch so it's, it looks like she built it up with like... Um, uh, plaster of Paris or something and then created some texture in that before she started which is an option that you guys have for your piece if you wanted to I don't think we have plaster of Paris but we have um, Elmer's glue and we can use paper to create texture if you wanted to um, what else is good about it is there anything else that's good about it okay what's bad about it or what's unattractive about it what don't we like about it it's not yeah. filling the whole picture. It's not filling the whole Yeah, it's like there's this like line of just blank canvas at the top, which is weird. And on the left. And it doesn't seem like she planned that. Well, the color's on the right, and then there's just like a two color on the left. It's kind yeah. of weird. Yeah. Yeah. The colors are very unbalanced. There is mm -hmm. no repetition of colors like we've seen in some of the other things. It doesn't look unified. It does not look unified, right. except for the cat scratches everywhere. My eyes are all over the place with it because there's no, there's nothing really to focus on. Your eye just, just all over it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're like, where am I supposed to look? What's going on? Um, for the first part of the lesson. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to go watch the video. No. Uh, okay. Something that, is there anything else that's about this that really bothers you? The left side to me seems heavier than the right. Mm -hmm. It sure the, does. It only has two colors and they're darker and they seem to be more it's prominent. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Thick, uh, yeah. yeah. Thickly applied. The, so this side is very that, sparse. Yeah, so that side looks heavy. Yeah, sure does. Anything else? What really, 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 really bugs me about this piece is that she's got pink and red next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, really. It <laughs> really bugs me. And then also it seems like she just kind of threw some yes, paint at the canvas, yeah. like maybe, I don't know. Um, she watched she might have been angry. Maybe, maybe she got dumped at the yacht club. I don't know. <laughs> maybe she caught her husband cheating at the yacht club. Um, I don't know what no happened at the yacht she club. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened at the yacht club caused some serious disharmony in her life and her pain. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, this is great. It fills the whole page. Yeah. It has yellow and purple contrasting colors. Yeah, it's it's like a greenish yellow and like a very bright lumo purple. There's no focal point. Yeah. And it's no focal point at all. Yeah, there really isn't a focal point. I don't see that. I, there's I, I, no rhythm there. It doesn't there. bother me with this one. There's not anything that stands out. I'd say this one's borderline. 
Like, I don't hate this. I don't love it. I wouldn't put it in my house. Yeah. I wouldn't spend money on it, but I wouldn't give them a D either. Um, What's the thing I called? might make a dress out of it. I don't, I don't remember. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> you might make a dress out of it. See, so it's not <laughs> awful. You'd wear it. It's not terrible. But that, that's the thing. This feels like a pattern. It doesn't feel like a painting, yeah. right? So it's not terrible. You've got some good contrast going on, both in terms of light and dark, and then you've got your color contrast going on. There's definitely, at least this person made some choices about which colors to use, which I respect in any artist. Um, don't take that as a challenge to use every color, please, Alex. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Um, there is, there are some repeating elements, like there's this little, I don't know, maybe flower shape that kind of, I think maybe this is supposed to be a bouquet or a field of flowers or something. So there are some repetitive elements of this throughout this. So it's not awful. It's not, it's nothing special. It's not going to win an art contest. Probably. I don't know. You never know. Like it or don't like it. Yeah. I like it. What do you like about it? What do you like about it? I like how it flows. It looks like the ocean. And it's balanced. It like the ocean. It's balanced. Good contrast. Yeah. Good contrast. Is it boring? No. A little bit. What makes it interesting? The smoky technique. The negative space is this that smoky contrast. contrast. How the gold pops out. And my favorite word of the day. What? My favorite word of the, the day. The brush strokes. The brushwork, right? The brushwork is interesting on this piece too, right? So even the negative space has some very distinctive brushwork that you can identify. Um, and then there's this, this is gold. I don't know if you can really see it that well in the mm -hmm. painting, but, uh, or in the picture, but you've got, um, it's a diagonal and it's kind of the rule of thirds. It's kind of mm -hmm. applied here too. Okay. Uh, kind of like a comic. galaxy. Like it or not like it? Yeah, I like it. it. Okay. Show me. Show me who likes it, who doesn't like it. I like it. I, like it. I, like it. I, like it. I wouldn't hang it, but I like it. Okay, okay, so if you have your thumb down, you've got terrible taste because this is also a Kandinsky. I'm just kidding. Um, you're entitled to your bad opinions. <laughs> So yes, it's also Kandinsky, it's called, I think, many circles or something. What do we like about it? The pattern. There's pattern, there's rhythm, there's pattern. And it has a focus point to it. Good, yeah, there's a good, strong focal point. It's on the colors. The colors, yeah, there's color harmony. Even though they're loud, they're not obnoxious. What else? What do we not like about it? I think the dark circle blends into the background too much to be a focal point. Okay, I could see that. Yeah, I can definitely see that as a criticism. Um, what else do we not like about it? That's it. That's not too bad. Um, it kind of actually reminds me of a night sky a little bit. I, I, I don't think I'd hang this in my house, but I wouldn't hate on it either. How about this? Uh. Nightmare. No. This is not a Jackson Pollock. This is somebody who thinks they're Jackson Pollock. Oh, <laughs> um, no. Jackson Pollock was good because he was actually doing something that was new oh. and extraordinary and you unique and it, ma it mattered in history. Oh, I, I leaned on it. Oh, multiple times apparently. This is not a Jackson Pollock. So why do we not like it? It's boring. It's, it's boring. boring. It's very, very boring. Mm -hmm. It's it only has two colors. And Three, four, I don't know. It's like various shades of gray. Yeah. And it's not organized. It's not organized. There's no internal organization. There's no focal point. There's nothing of interest going on. There's no structure. It's derivative. So if you didn't, like, you know, he probably had to make some money while he was doing his... This is not a Pollock. This is not a Jackson Pollock. So didn't he do, like, a series for motels or something? And this was... One of them. No, no, this is a modern thing that I found on Etsy. Yeah, <laughs> this is bad. Um, how about this one? Yes. We like, like it? it. Yeah. Looks like a bouquet. 
I was about to yeah. say the same thing. It's the same artist as that really, really bad one with the muddy colors I showed you earlier. So this one came out a little bit better, it seems. There's some planning. There's some underlying structure. What else did they do right in this one? Except they didn't fill the whole space. Yeah, you kind of, it would kind of be nice if they yeah. maybe, I don't know, maybe had the bouquet a little bit down, coming into the frame, had a little bit more planning on their negative space. Oh, the smudginess at the top bothers me. Yeah, that kind of seems like it's not intentional, right? Like it's. I like the fact that it's purple, blue, and green, which are all derivatives of blue. You yeah. Know, blues and yeah. purple and blue That's and green. And, and? Analog and analogous, analogous color scheme. Ding, ding, ding. Congratulations. I need candy to throw out. <laughs> pencils. Oh, drawing okay. pencils. Um, <laughs> so, yes, it's an analogous color scheme. There's color harmony, right? Um, so, analogous color scheme, for those of you who weren't here, means that in the color wheel, you don't have the coloring wheel up. I have one right here, so it's all good. Analogous color scheme means that it's blue purple, green. So they're colors that are kind of like on one quarter of the color wheel, essentially. Um, so yes, we've got colors that create harmony. Um, anything else? Like or don't like? It's okay. It's okay. No. That one looks like it's boring. I'm not into the just black and white. I just Me really either. I don't like it. It looks like it's upside down. But it's a nice and third. <laughs> it's that third. Yeah. It kind of looks more like half. It's going more interesting. interesting the more it's trying I look to create some reflection, yeah. but it looks like the paint was just like everything here. Yeah, so there's definitely a, an element of letting it just go and see what happens. Yeah. Um, but there's, there, there's an element of surrendering control, but it's not completely surrendered. There is definitely some control. Um, have, I, have I ever told you guys about Dada, the art movement Dada, or does anybody know what it is? Has anybody ever heard of it? I've heard, heard of it. Heard of it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So they were like... I want to say they followed the surrealists. They were like a small self-contained art unit that didn't really super lead to anything else. Um, they were an anti-art movement, so some people don't even consider them art. Um, they wrote these manifestos that were this long that were just gibberish. Um, everything is art. Art is Dada. Dada is the fly that sits on the pomegranate that flies around the dog's butt. And I don't know, it's just stupid, nonsensical things like that. <laughs> Um, they would have noise concerts where they would just get together and somebody would just be clanging together spoons and someone else would be reading a poem backwards and someone else would just be like yeah. singing like a children's song with like, I don't know, just called again? Dada. Yeah. It's the art movement Dada. It happened yeah, after yeah, the Second it. World War and their, ar their argument was logic got us two world wars, we clearly have to try something different. <laughs> it, it sounds like it sort of was yeah, I think. It was out of Germany. Well yeah, well, yeah, they did start in Germany, I believe. There was German, French, and then the American data. Um, so they kind of it kind of spread. But yeah, some of the most well-known data data artists were from Germany. Um, one, they all they were also like anti-consumerism stuff. So. One of, this, one of the things was this, uh, it was recently displayed at the Dali Museum. It's a urinal. Uh, and the artist signed it, Armat. His name is not Armat. He signed it Armat and he, he renamed it Fountain. And said, okay, I've elevated this to the status of an artwork. Um, <laughs> but they were all about the effects of chance and just randomness in their art. Um, there's this wonderful story where one of them, uh, we've got a book of his here somewhere. Anyway, he, I'll find it in a minute. He took a sculpture to um, a museum and it was a series of cut glass things behind panes of clear glass. 
Uh, and it was all found, found glass that he put between these panes of glass and it kind of created this mobile, th mobile thing. And the day he delivered it, there were kids at the art museum. And he was like, yeah, I'm delivering this, but I'm not like a super excited about it. At that point, he was already extremely famous and his work was worth tens of thousands of dollars. There was a field trip on a kids knocked it over. And while he was in the office signing paperwork, one of the people who worked at the museum came in. I'm so, so sorry to have to tell you this. Someone knocked your sculpture over and it broke. And they took him out to see it. And when he saw it, he exclaimed, now it is perfect. It is complete. <laughs> so that's kind of what this feels like. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> Um, so there's definitely an element of randomness to this, but there is also definitely an element of planning and structure. So I kind of like this one actually. I think I like it with color in it. I just don't like the. I don't like the black, black and, and white. white. I like the black and white. I can see the brush strokes. Yes, the brush strokes. But then there's also like the uh, the the dripping, and not I don't always love dripping, but this dripping is very on purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not just like I, th I, mm. I threw some things at the it's canvas controlled. and saw what stuck. It's controlled, <laughs> right? Yeah. Even the pl there are definitely places where he dripped and splotched paint, but he, select he did it selectively. It's not just everywhere and anywhere it wants to go. Even that white patch is, has a clearer edge than anything else. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. Good, bad. He's intense. Alexa likes it. No. What do you like about it, Alexa? Um, the colors uh, are harmonious. Harmonious? You think that's harmonious? Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call that harmonious, but I could see they, they're all primaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, to some people who like bright and vibrant things, I could see that those go together. They're frequently used together. Is that not a scheme? There's like, it's like orange. primary color scheme. Yes, that would be a scheme. Well, yeah, the primary color. But like, as you see, it's like uh, blue. It, blue's opposite is orange, and they've chosen two colors next to it. Yes. So like yeah, orange. split complementary. You're right. Yeah, that yeah. would be a split complementary. You're correct. So yes, I stand corrected. It is our minus. <laughs> It is harmonious to some people. Um, what else do we do you like about it? They used the whole the whole canvas. Did they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they were careful about the edges. They, they, yeah. they should have put down something to splatter on. Yeah. They could I, really go quite crazy. I think that if if this progressed past the edges, or if all of this that's in the center was concentrated in a corner maybe, I would have liked it better. What, what don't we like about this? I don't like the colors. It yeah. doesn't have the structures that we've been talking about, any of them. Yeah, there's no focal point, there's no structure whatsoever. There's no much there's no, no, there, there's not anything that I can see that as far as rules of composi composition that mm -hmm. apply to that. They're not rules, they're guidelines. But you're right, there's no guidelines of composition that's being implemented. And our eyes are going wild. Yes, again, we're like having a stroke here, like trying to figure out where to look at this thing. Um, there's some very interesting brushwork going on in the background that I really actually like on the blue. I just kind of feel like they would have done better if they didn't just go drip a bunch of Colors things on, on top of it. Haphazardly. So again, this section is called "Why We Should Plan Our Artworks." This is why. This could have been really good. Would have been nice if they'd spiral with it and spiral. Yeah, the exactly. So even if they had done the same thing but applied some sort of rhythm to it, like spirals, that would have made it, I think, more more pleasing to the eye. Maybe. Okay. Oh, there's one thing that I do want to point out. They have a lot of white in the background with the blue, and then they finish the whole thing off with white, which kind of creates a little bit of um, unity, right? So that's something that the artist did get right, I feel like. 
Hmm. Um, you like it? Makes me queasy. <laughs> it does. I think it might have made the artist queasy too. <laughs> what do you like about it? I don't know. I mean, for me, my eyes are good into the um, corner there. Mm -hmm. Top one. It looks like a tulip there to me. Tulip? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I guess the color points too. Okay. What do this? It is interesting. Brush, brush, yeah. dress, brush work. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like that the artist picked up some of the colors in his brush stroke. So, like, this brush stroke is not just white, it's blue and white. Like, right. that one's red and yellow, which is, or pink and yellow, which is kind of interesting. What else? What do we not like about it? No much balance to yeah. like that red over there. There's a little bit on this side, but it's nothing on on the third mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. So that one there's like a lack of balance. There. Nothing that picks yeah. up the cyan yeah. anywhere in the picture. Um, what else? I feel like there's not really. Do you, do you feel like there's rhythm in this? No. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. really, right? Well, like they're contrasting I mean, I like the rhythms. Mm -hmm. The contrast is what? The contrasting rhythms. There's there's some circles and then there's lines and they're kind of yeah. Like you've got kind of this V that repeats, but only over there, and then you've got this I don't know whatever that shape is. So it feels like this person just kind of haphazardly moved their brush around without very much mastery of it or anything. Just like no real pattern. There's no, yeah, there's no, like, if, if they had done the same thing, but, like, only made backwards Cs, I feel like it would have been better, or only made Vs or something, I don't know. Um, something else that bugs me about this is the colors are muddy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's a little bit too, like, if he had only used, let's say, an analogous color scheme and bled those colors together, it might be good. But because he's got all these complementaries, there's mud and browns and just stuff that's just I don't feel like it was his intention or her intention I don't know who did this almost at the end how about this one makes me sad <laughs> <laughs> it does I think it's called oh it's called acid rain oh the painting's called acid rain oh acid rain acid Acid, acid rain. Sad. <laughs> so it is sad. <laughs> Do we like it? Do we not like it? It's muddy. It's, it's very muddy. Very muddy. Mm -hmm. Very muddy. Yeah. Um, is there planning? No. no. Is there well, rhythm? No. All that downward motion. It does look like rain. It does mm -hmm. look like it's dripping down. Mm -hmm. Um, that part. So you can kind of say there is rhythm. Yeah. It would have been better if he'd stuck to more vibrant colors. It would have yeah, been good then. It might have started out as vibrant colors. Yeah. 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 Well, the stuff on the the drawing on the left doesn't mm -hmm. seem to tie into anything else. I think <laughs> that's cracked. Oh, is it? Oh, you think so? No, paint. Genie, get your head out of the gutter. From here, it looks like Mickey Rue. I actually kind of like the cracks. I don't hate them, but yeah, you're right. It doesn't pick anything else up. No. And it's there's a whole lot of white over here for no particular reason other than I don't think the artist really planned it. Yeah. Like, I think what this is probably a poor painting, and they probably pour the paint over here, then let it run here, and then let it run down, instead of letting it run in both directions, and then letting it run down, I don't know. And they didn't pick a very... And they didn't wait until it dried. Yeah. The, the next. Yes. Race. What is, is it... What's in the background behind the painting? Oh, bushes. Oh. This is another one of those Etsy things. Okay. I had to really look for bad art, you guys. It was hard to find. <laughs> you had to look for it? Yeah, it was tough to find. How about this one? Do we like it or not? It's boring. Too busy. It's too it's busy. Messy. It's a little messy. I feel like the messy could have worked if they had more structure on top of it. Like, I kind of like the black drips in the background, 
But I feel like they went and just messed it all up by putting paint on top and then finger painting it. <laughs> yeah. It kind of looks like that. Was, that's what they did. Like, they didn't give it time to dry between layers. They didn't... They were just impatient, and they just created something that didn't really super work. There's a lot of muddy colors. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, cool. We've got a whole nother hour. So, oh this we're month, here. we're using... One. Big canvases. So you've got lots and lots of room to create your artwork. Oh. So um, I want you to a little bit think about what it is you want to make. Uh, if you want to work with the rule of thirds, if you want to work with one of the other composition examples that I gave you. Um, and we're going to work with acrylic paint. Decide if you want to do a texture underneath. I can show you how to do that with the stuff we have available. And then I also want to give you the option of before you do that, I'm going to give you guys the option to go outside and take some pictures of a landscape to use as basically a...